Hi, today I'm going to talk about the time temperature superposition. I'm going to compare the WLF equation to the Arrhenius shift equation. Which of these is better? It turns out that one of them is actually better than the other, and it's the one I would use and recommend. And today I will show you how I can come up with that conclusion. So let's first review a little bit about time temperature superposition, TTS. Uh, as you may recall from one of my earlier videos, if you do a stress relaxation test at one temperature, you get sort of a curve in green here shown here. But if you then repeat this test at either a higher or lower temperature, you may get a curve that's in either red or blue that is the same shape, but it's just shifted left and right. And if, you, if that's what happens, and you know an equation for how to shift these curves, you will then have a, a general viscoelastic material model that works at different temperatures. So today I'm going to talk about equations that describe how you shift these curves. And the shift factor is called the AT parameter. And it's usually written as shown at the bottom here. So let's talk first about the WLF equation, williams landau ferry It's a very common equation. It's often discussed in terms of uh, applying it to amorphous polymers above Tg or close to Tg. And uh, here's the equation for it. It looks like an interesting equation. The three parameters, C1, C2, and T0. Typically, the recommendation is to find these from experimental data. If you plot the curve uh, as a function of temperature here, so the shift factor versus temperature, you see that it's not a linear response, obviously, and it tends to be more rapid at a lower temperature than the higher temperature. So that's how the WLF equation looks. Now, if you talk about the Arrhenius type uh, time temperature shift factor equation, I've seen in the literature people talking about applying this for semicrystalline polymers. And the equation that's applied here is uh, what's used in Abacus. ANSYS, curiously, and LS Dyna have a slightly simple, simpler version. And you can see the difference here is that Abacus has a parameter called TC. And uh, if that's zero, you end up with the same equation as used by ANSYS and LS Dyna. So it's kind of interesting. It's a different uh, equation used by the two. And if you plot the horizontal shift factor versus temperature, you'll get sort of this kind of response. Of course, the, the shape of these curves will depend on the parameters. So and in short, Abacus has three parameters, and ANSYS and LS Dyna has two parameters. And another thing to point out is ANSYS calls this something else than Arrhenius. They call it the TN model uh, in their documentation. So the question I want to address here, which of these is better? And can we really talk about that? What do you mean better? It doesn't that depend on the material. Well, it actually it not. We can actually decide which one is better. So let's start with the Arrhenius equation and the Abacus version of it. Here's the equation that I just showed. And if I simplify the math a little bit, I write it on a common denominator, I end up with this equation here. I've really done nothing except rewriting it a little bit. Then I introduce another constant, C2. I define that to be equal to T0 minus Tz, uh, this term here. And that allows me to rewrite this original Arrhenius equation in the form shown down here. Very interesting, isn't it? Because if we compare that to the, uh, to the WLF equation, we'll see that they are actually the same. We have a prefactor here, and we all have a different logarithm, natural logarithm versus log 10, but that's just the fact, a constant factor between them. So we end up here with the same equation. So what I've shown here is that the Arrhenius equation as implemented by Abacus is mathematically the same as the WLF equation. Interesting. And Ansys and Ellis Dyna, they have a simplified version of this, of the Arrhenius equation, where Tz is equal to zero. And if Tc is equal to zero, uh, you will, if this goes to zero, you end up with a version of this equation that is not as advanced as the WLF equation. It becomes a, a special case of it, where C2 must be equal to T0. So uh, that's not the same, and therefore the WLF equation will be more accurate than the Arrhenius equation that's implemented by ANSYS or Alice Dyna. And if you use Abacus, you get the same results, because they are actually mathematically the same. So let's explore this a little bit using M calibration. So here's an M calibration window where I have a uniaxial tension load case. I pull in it to 50% strain. 
in the, at some kind of strain rate at the temperature of 293. And then I have an abacus linear elastic prony series. I just picked one prony series term, for example, with a WLF equation. As you see, these are the parameters. And if I run this once, this is the equation that I, the results that I get. If I uh, see that it goes up to about 0 0.5 here at the end. I have another example uh, where I used the Arrhenius type equation. This, in this case, I converted the parameters according to the equations that I showed earlier to try to make them equivalent. Uh, this time I specified Arrhenius, and I will show when I run this, I get exactly the same stress strain curve in this case. Just to illustrate again that the, the Abacus Arrhenius uh, model is the same, can be made to be exactly the same as the WLF. For Ansel and Elastina, um, the, the Arrhenius model is not as accurate as the WLF. It has one more parameter. You have more freedom to uh, adjust that to experimental data. So, so to summarize, I would recommend simply using the WLF equation in all cases because it's always the same or better than the Arrhenius because of this additional degree of freedom. And um, hopefully, hopefully you find this useful. And if you have any questions, you can ask them below.